Welcome to Bigfoot Collectors Club, the show where we talk to amazing guests about their personal paranormal history and share stories of high strangeness. I'm your host, Michael McMillan. With me always, don't... Really working it there. Yeah. Bryce Johnson. <laughs> I, I wanted to do like a cavalcade of fun voices. I'm in a yeah. good mood. Good uh, Bryce Johnson and our super producer, Riley Bray. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, 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 I'm so excited. It's the end of the month, which means we are digging into some listener files this week. Mm -hmm. These are stories that you, dear Club Scouts, have sent in to us about the weird shit that has happened to you. And, guys, I'm really excited because... I don't know what's happened lately. Maybe it's because we've had some new friends joining the club, but we're get I'm getting like dumped on with these elf files right now. Like, yes. I thought That's the, awesome, man. I love it. I thought the world was weird. It's way weirder than I thought it was because <laughs> on the daily we are getting like I'm not kidding, like 6 to 10 <laughs> stories. Every day. I have to I've like started I'm a new file that's just like L Files 2023, and there's already so many in there. So um, I mean, we've said it before, man. The par the paranormal just it seems to uh, be more pervasive than people thought. It touches everybody's life, and if it hasn't touched yours yet, we can work on that. Hey, uh, we, we know that it's probably <laughs> touched somebody close to you, so hey, it's hey, like that. Paranormal mm -hmm. phenomena. Stop being such a perv. Don't <laughs> you big pervert. Quit, quit touching everybody. Yeah, quit touching us. We don't like it. <laughs> it is a um, really interesting addition to my day, though, now just getting these pings of these emails while I'm like at work or something. And it's just like someone I don't know telling me about a ghost. And I'm like, this yeah, is pretty great. I enjoy this. Vi yeah. Violent poltergeist <laughs> in my sister's bathroom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's you know before stuff. before podcasts like this, I don't know if people had a place to uh, you know share their stories. I mean, who were you going to go to if you had like a, a poltergeist in your bathroom? You're probably just like, eh, maybe I'll save it for my Thanksgiving dinner table. But uh, you just other than put, that, now you have now you us. Have us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just put duct tape on that door and you never go back in there again. Right, um, that's right. Well, we have an amazing guest, an off-requested uh, return to the show with us tonight. I'm excited to bring her in. Before we do that, quick reminder, in case you missed the news the past couple of weeks, we are doing another Clubhouse live stream on Saturday, March 11th at 9 p.m. Eastern. We're teaming up with PopsyLounge.com once again for a live stream that lets you, the listener, into the virtual Clubhouse from the comfort yes. of your own home as we record the show. And we're going to have games, segments with you guys, Bryce's Secret Stash, so much more. So head over to PopsyLounge.com for tickets and information Saturday, March 11th at 9 p.m. Eastern on popsylounge.com. That's just around Looking that corner. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Yes. And it's on Very, my calendar now, too. So great. We, I'm okay. not going to double book myself this yeah, time. Yeah, I, I put it in my calendar, Michael. You'd be very proud of me. I, got I love it, it boys. With a, well, with a one week good. alert. That's it's right. just a little over a week away once uh, our listeners hear this episode. So go buy some tickets. Go get pick up some. Go pick up some VIP passes so you can uh, have a little meet and greet with us after the show. Okay. Yeah. Enough with that. Enough with that. We know you'll be there. Our guest this week is a comedic performer and actress from shows like Dollface, One Day at a Time, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Come on, guys. She blew yeah. our minds last time she was here and quickly became a Club Scout favorite whose return is well overdue. Club Scouts of all timelines, please welcome back to the show, Santina Muha. Ow. Oh, hello. hello. Santina Welcome back, Santina. Santina is back. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Santina's back. I don't know. It doesn't really work with self yeah, 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 it. 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 <laughs> Thank you so much. What an intro. God. Santina, coming yeah. in from the East Coast, how are things over there? Are they cold? Are they spooky? What's <laughs> happening in your world? I'll say that this is my first February in New Jersey in like 
over 10 years. And I don't know what's happening, or maybe we do, but it's not as cold as it used to be. So I don't mm. know if that's... <laughs> mm. you, yeah. you want Alarming. to think that that's good, but nope. it's probably not. <laughs> uh-uh. Nope, it's bad. Uh, yeah, it's probably bad. But, the, but, but listen, I'm here. I'm getting good food. I'm stuck here because of an injury. I broke my leg the day after Ugh. Christmas. I uh, cannot fly right now. Um, but like I said, I got family members bringing me pasta and sauce all the time. And, it, you know, that helps. That you helps. should make them like do Christmas dinner like every week, just like on repeat, like uh, <laughs> like some bad dream. You know what I mean? <laughs> just stuck in it. Yeah, yeah. Just invite Bill Murray over every night. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, today's Joe Pesci. I don't know why I thought it is, but today's Joe Pesci's 80th birthday. Let's just say happy birthday, Joe Pesci. Oh my happy, God. Birthday, happy birthday, Joe, Joe E.P. Come be on From the New show. Jersey. We know oh, you're listening. Why have you. <laughs> Why haven't you sent in an L files yet? Why haven't you asked to be on the show, Joe Pesci? Uh, um, he's the best. The last yeah. time you were here, it was episode 165, the Todd mm-hmm. Morton UFO incident. And you like destroyed our lives because you told us about how you have a gift. You are in touch with the the other side. We had no idea going into that episode that that was the case. So we got to ask, has anything happened recently? Uh, you, you know, they say that when you're home alone or well, not home alone, but when you're home a lot, that's when the activity ticks up because, you know, you're 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 more in tune with your surroundings. So I don't know. Have you mm-hmm. had any uh, an uptick in paranormal activity? Well, I mean, let's see an uptick. I don't know, because I always have stuff going on, but something really really kooky should we say happened the other night so okay so since i've been here i have some stuff in storage so i've been taking the stuff out of storage and kind of looking through it my mom's been dropping stuff off where i am right now and i'm going through it so i found in this storage this old very old like virgin mary it's like it's pretty it's like the height of a cereal box you know and it's oh. and it, yeah it's big and it's it's just her head like her it's like a bust yes exactly and it has like a night light it has like a little light (gasps) that goes like almost like the bleeding heart sort of virgin mary and this sat on my nonna's and that's italian for grandmother on my nonna's dresser like you know my whole life when i was a little girl and it would be like bedtime you know the light would be on and you would know and it was very comforting and she i mean my nonna had religious artifact i mean the whole thing was like a church in there she literally one time got a statue from the church and put it in the backyard like a life-size statue of michael just <laughs> so, do you mind if i borrow this i just yeah. i my backyard fountain needs a little something i, I thought <laughs> yes i thought she you were gonna say that the church made a statue of her because she was so no. devout <laughs> that'd be great no. no but they could have but she she, she had stuff everywhere and everywhere but this one was cool you know it it lit up it was cool and i loved it and i um still remember it vivid memories of it when i was a child so then uh she passed away in 2009 and she still visits me all the time and as a matter of fact she had the gift like i did i remember she had it very strong as well runs my family like sicilian grandma right the sicilian witchiness you said something Mm. like that yes Exactly. Sicilian witchiness. So we made it like a deep, we would always talk about when she was alive, you have to come visit me after you pass, like you promise. And she's like, yes, yes, I'll figure it out and I will come. So, um, yeah, we talked about it. I'll figure yeah. out the afterlife. I'll get there as soon as I'll, I can. I'll work it out. Once I cross over, I'm going to figure it out, honey. Don't worry. You guys are really missing the accent, but I'm going to let you keep doing it. Yeah, it's <laughs> not even close. It yeah. doesn't stop us. Yeah, we, we... <laughs> But she's off the she was off the boat Sicilian, but it's okay. Um, but okay. So then here we go. So the, so I take this this Virgin Mary out of the thing, the the bust, and I'm like, I have I had it in my old house in a bag, but I never took it out of the bag because so I'm like, well, I'm not you know I'm not gonna I'm not that type of that generation where I'm going to put religious stuff all over the place. So I'm like, I like this. It's has sentimental value, but I'm not going to put it really on display. So then it was in my storage because I could not, I didn't have the heart to get rid of it. So then my brother came over the other day because he sells stuff at the flea market. So I put some stuff aside for him and he saw that 
in one of the boxes. And he's like, what are you doing with this? I'm like, I don't know. He's like, I remember this. This was on Nanda's dresser when I was a little kid. And I'm like, that was on Nanda's dresser when I was a little kid. So it was like very special. Right. So I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, listen, I don't want to tell you to keep more stuff because he just doesn't want to encourage that. Um, he's like, but I think you should keep this. And I was like, I think I should keep it too. But I don't know because mommy's, you know, my mom said no, like she doesn't, she thinks it's like too big and it doesn't match my no. vibe or whatever. But I was like, I feel weird getting rid of it. So my brother puts it on the counter and he goes to plug it in. And I'm like, I'm like, it's not going to work. It hasn't worked. It hasn't been plugged in in like 20 years. So he plugs it in and it turns on. I don't know how. I, I, we were like, whoa, that's so weird. So we're like, okay, cool. And then we take a, you know, my, my, someone else was there. They're like, oh, let me take a picture of you guys. We took a picture whatever. So I'm like, that's weird. I would never expect a light bulb to, to have juice like this, you know, yeah. much, this that many years later. So then I go, you know what? That settles it. I'm going to keep it. And then when I said that, the light went out. No. Oh, snap. And, oh, and hasn't turned back on. And we all were like, what? And my brother, he's not like that, you know, he's not witchy like me. And he was freaked. His fiance on the other end is witchy like me, probably even, she's a different kind of, she's witchy too, but not like Sicilian witchy, but like probably more like um, Ma- Massachusetts. Well, where, where, where'd they do it? Like Salem witchy? Salem. Yes. It's more like Salem witchy she is. But so she was like, um, I feel something. I feel something. And I'm like, me too. So it was I had a lot of validation in the room. So it was good. Oh my, 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 my I have a little, uh, <laughs> that's amazing. I have this light next to my bed and it, it, it talks to me. I mean, not talks okay. to me, but it like, it like blinks. <laughs> like, like yeah. when I have like a thought, like something like poignant, which is not, not very often, but, but when I do, it'll like go, it'll like go blink, blink. And, and it's like, it's like as if on cue. It's like I don't know. There's something about the uh, right. the afterlife and their ability to affect these these lights and and Bryce, uh, like Bryce. A, if you're open to it, <laughs> uh huh. You know, we've been Riley, yours was in the kitchen. Yeah. We've been doing this show for six years almost. Five. Yeah. I'll, I'll dial it yeah. back. I'll give you less time. And you've never told us about a light that you communicate with in your bedroom? <laughs> why? Are, mean, why? <laughs> what else are you hiding? Please tell us more about this light. I'm sorry, Santina. We have to find out. Well, it just is. Yeah, no, it doesn't. So it's it, it never like like Riley. You said yours in the in in, in the kitchen often will like su- you know yeah, sort of, of flicker every yeah. every now and then. This this one doesn't flicker. So it, it only flickers like well, I guess I guess it does flicker. Wait, but, but to be clear, like, I said I said mine flickers because it's an LED bulb on a dimmer <laughs> and it just flickers. Oh right, right. Okay, but you keep right. going. I just wanted to clear yeah, that so, up. So yeah, my, mine doesn't really flicker unless I'm like and unless I feel like I have like like a thought that's like sort of a, like a penetrating thought or if I'm like, like speaking what? to like a higher source or something, it'll like go click, oh. it'll go like flip, flip, like, like like very communicative. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you get a sense that like, oh, that's, that's a sign. Gotcha. Like Stranger Things. Yeah, totally. Just like Stranger Things. Yeah, it's kind of <sighs> fucked up. Once again, Bryce, you've given us information that is so oddly specific and yet so vague at the same time. You are just, you are my mystery, Bryce. You're my mystery. <laughs> There's a lot more to come, my friend. Uh, yeah. Man, the, the, I, I love some of those old religious uh, ar- artifices. Like, and that, that Virgin Mary's nightlight sounds cool as hell. Yeah, um, I'm keeping it because you know what? As long as I don't surround my entire home with, you know, m- like rosary beads and all this stuff, then mm-hmm. it's not going to walk and be like, whoa, Santina, when did you become, you know, it's just like, it will be nice. And anyway, I feel like Virgin Mary's making a big comeback in uh, style wise. Really? You- hey. Yeah, I do. I'll be down. Where do. are we seeing, where are we seeing mm-hmm. like the Virgin Mary like hanging out? Like in boutiques. I feel like I see oh. like little things of her in boutiques and stuff. And I'm like, okay, Mary, I see you. Hey man, the goddess the goddess is returning. That's what they say. You know what I mean? We're in the era of like the matriarch is make matriarchal yeah. goddess Age coming Aquarius, back into her power. Yeah, the divine yeah. feminine. Yep, that's let's, right. Let's bring it. Let's do it. Um, so any other activity happening with this lamp like currently? Well, no, because now I have to get a new light bulb it. for it. Okay. But uh I I'm sure my nonna, especially with my brother here and me, I'm sure she was here that night and she was probably so happy. And I think she, 
I swear. You know what? I'll be honest. What, her name was Josephine. And the night that I broke my leg, I saw, I was in a hotel and I saw in the hotel a, a painting that said Hotel Josephine. And mm. then I was mm. taken to the hospital where my non no, my grandfather, died. And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, and my also my grandmother, my father's mother also died in that hospital. And I was like, I think all my grandparents want me to move back to New Jersey, like a lot. I mean, they broke your leg, you know? They anchored me. Yeah, I feel like they anchored me here. (laughs) Wait a minute, guys. Well, I mean, I'm joking. that is a wild thought. It'd That's be. what yeah. Joe Pesci would do. I'm going to break your leg. <laughs> I'm going to break your leg. No, I'm serious. I think they are anchoring me here because they know wow. that really there's nothing that can keep me from going unless I can't physically go somewhere. Whoa. Seriously, I think they all got together and they were like, you know what? I think she needs to be back in Jersey for a little while. What do we do? Eh, she's broken her leg a few times. She seems to be able to handle that. Let's do that. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Your ancestors are hardcore. I like. Yeah, Yeah, I respect it. I wonder if I wonder if if Nona like broke that, uh, burnt that bulb out because she was worried it was maybe going to be a fire hazard. And once she heard you, you you're keeping it. She's like, "All right, got to get a new bulb if you're going to keep this, because otherwise, this is going to go up in flames." That could be I'm a sure. communication tool too, just like my my bedside lamp. Maybe she's like, you know, hey, we gotta. This could be our new tool to communicate together. Oh, yeah. I would love that because I have so many questions, like specifically for her. And then you're gonna look like me talking that. to your bedside lamp, and I don't know if that's a <laughs> yeah. hey, and nothing I have wrong with that, man. You. Yeah. So oh many God. questions, yeah. nothing specific wrong. Specific questions for Bryce. Um, all right, let's do this before <laughs> we get into this week's. L files. Let's catch up on a tiny little bit of BCC news. Now, if you were over on the Patreon any uh, recently in the past few weeks, you might have. Um, heard our invention of something called the the fuck you bucket that's when we get upset and put something that we don't like into a proverbial bucket and shortly after the creation of the fuck you bucket (laughs) this article came out and i sent it over to bryce and he immediately 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 said it's going in the fuck you bucket Um, straight away this story's been out for a couple weeks, but it's the first chance that we've had to talk about it. This is well, this was kind of everywhere. Santina, you probably saw this on Instagram. I've pulled this specific text from OutsideOnline.com. Bigfoot is probably just a black bear, according to recent research. Data of Sasquatch sightings in a new preprint finds a strong correlation with bear population density. This is uh, from West Siller on February 3rd. Yeah. If Bigfoot is no, there... No and- shit. Bigfoot's in the woods where bears are. I mean, like, <laughs> duh. <laughs> okay. They're not saying Bigfoot's a tree, you know? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Michael. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> if Bigfoot is there, it may be many bears, concludes Flo Foxen, a researcher who just published a preprint analysis of Bigfoot sightings. Now, I don't know what preprint analysis means, so maybe, uh, Riley, you can do some light Googling for me unless this explains it. I would think it's like part of the peer review it's thing for a scientific paper. That'd be my guess before it's officially Great. published. That's okay. my guess. Got it. They're these, finding these scientists, su- man. Their findings <laughs> suggest that there's a high correlation between documented Bigfoot encounters and dense populations of black bears. Previous studies of the Pacific Northwest have in- identified that most Sasquatch sightings occur in areas with large numbers of black bears. But Fox, and I can't help but say black bears, like it's a cute little cartoon <laughs> animal. But Fox and extended that analysis across the entire United States and Canada using a geographic database of sightings compiled by the Bigfoot, Re- Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization. BFRO, Fox and compared yeah. entry, en, excuse me, entries with local black bear and human population densities. Sasquatch sightings are logically a function of the number of people in each state, province, it, slash province available to make a sighting, and the size land area of each state province because interactions between humans and animals are less likely when each populate an area sparsely, explains Foxen in the analysis. Consequently, models were implemented which investigated the possibilities, uh, the possible association between sightings and bear populations while also adjusting for the potential impact of human population and land area. 
Fox and applied several <laughs> regression models to the data sets in an effort to find out if changes to one variable were associated with changes in another. The result? Black bear populations was significantly significantly associated with Sasquatch reports, such that, on the average, every 1,000 bear increase uh, in the bear population is associated with about a 2.7% increase in Sasquatch sightings. Thus, a black bear population's increase, Sasquatch sightings are expected to increase also. Foxen does note that Bigfoot sightings have occurred in places without black bear populations, although this may be interpreted as evidence for the existence of an unknown hominid in North America. It is also explained why misidentification of other animals, including humans, among other possibilities, Foxen writes. Still, the association between the presence of black bears and Sasquatch sightings is strong enough that Foxen is able to draw a direct correlation between the two. The researcher concludes in the preprint... One Sasquatch sighting is expected for every few hundred bears in a given state or province. Go, Bryce. <laughs> Fuck you, Fox, Flaxen, <laughs> whatever your name is and your study. No, I think this is I, – I, I laughed at this because, I don't know, this is just – this is this is so – lackadaisical in its in its in its premise. And, and and I say this because, you know, a lot of these sightings come from hunters, experienced hunters and and rangers and 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 people who spend a lot of time in the woods. And I just you know, when when I speak with witnesses on Expedition Bigfoot, mm-hmm. you know, I I never buy the misidentification theory. The misidentification theory is that just, oh, people are misidentifying black bears as uh, as Bigfoots. Well, when you read these Bigfoot encounters that make their way to the BFRO, first of all, they're very detailed and like specific on how these creatures are moving and walking mm-hmm. and like peering behind trees. And it's like, you know, I just it, it's so. I don't know. I think it's an insult. It's a slap to the face of of the of the Bigfoot eyewitness to just say, you know, I've done some graphs and uh, <laughs> guys, it's black bears, black bears. <laughs> it's like, no. Yeah, I don't really buy it either. And maybe what if they just get along well with black bears? Like, you know how certain animals just absolutely or certain beings are around each other like. Humans and dogs are usually found together. You don't confuse them. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a true. great point. I like the idea of Bigfoot being like black bear shepherds. Yeah. Why not? Maybe, yeah. Well, why not? Well, maybe there's some sort of black bear uh, genetic, you know, that, like how a coyote is in the dog family, whatever. Maybe there's something in there and they're like related in that way, but I, they're not. Maybe, what if, I don't know. What if, no, I like the track you're thinking. What if, though, it's something as simple as, like, food source? Maybe mm-hmm. where bears migrate, Sasquatch also migrates because they Absolutely. feed off the same type of berries or, right. uh, uh, you know, food, kill, like deer, whatever. Maybe they're just on the same game trail as these bears. Now, obviously, I will say, and I think everyone here agrees, of course, sometimes w- people will see an animal in the woods and misidentify it. I'm sure. sure. Mm-hmm. Just like people see a floating plastic bag in the sky and they think it's a UFO and then it turns out to be just a floating plastic bag. I'm sure that where there are high bear populations, there are a number of Sasquatch sightings that are misidentifications. I, you know, I totally I get, believe that. I guess I However, that my, doesn't oh go ahead. That doesn't yeah. that doesn't that's not a catch all for all of these sightings. No, I, I, I guess my my feathers get ruffled just because, like with with the Flatwoods monster, it was it was scientists and critics alike. They were like, hey, "Guys, this is just an owl." Like, come on! <laughs> and it's like the you know the the Hopkinsville goblin guys. These were just monkeys that escaped from a zoo. Like, what are we talking about here? It's like they just won't give any any sort of leeway to the fact that this world is not only stranger than we suppose, but it's stranger than we can suppose, and things happen mysterious phenomena is taking place all around us all the time as we'll soon find out from our listener files so 
you know, whatever. Do your little graphs and charts. I love that he's like, <laughs> consequently, <laughs> models were implemented. Like, oh, okay, that came across your desk. You got a file to say, hey, let's try and figure this thing out. Um, Bryce, I will warn you, you are verging on the edge of being high school bully right now. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry, you, yeah. you are sounding like you're about I'm to like knock someone's movie. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Knock, <laughs> knock some <laughs> nerd science project <laughs> out of their this hands. Is a nerd. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't mean to, I don't mean to say it like that. And look, you know, I, no, I no, we know, we just no, with, yeah, with, no, with those graphs are going and, straight into the fuck you bucket. That's where yeah, they're going. going right into the fuck you bucket. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Riley. That's it. Look, <laughs> I, okay. we, we, we on Get this it? show just always wanted to be a champion for the for the witness, for the experiencer of the paranormal and, and, and stuff like this. I mean, it's, it's going to happen, you know, but it just uh it's sort of a slap in the face, and that's why I get so offended. You know, I get it. I get it. There, you know what? In other words, the scientists—they're bullying you, Bryce. They're bullying yeah, they're- you. <laughs> yeah, I'm bullied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, it's time to hear from some of those eyewitnesses, our very own Club Scouts. <laughs> Okay, we are digging into some fresh L files, uh, boys. Get your, uh, I was going to say, like, uh, wh- I guess your suit and tie on. We're going down into the basement. We're going to, you know, Great. dig around in these file cabinets. Um, and let's see. These are stories that people send into Bigfoot Collectors Club at gmail.com. So if you've had an experience you can't explain, then uh, please. Hit us up over there. Let's kick this off. Santina, you are our guest down here in the L Files basement. Grab a flashlight and uh and 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 let's 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 break one of these open. Let's get to the bottom of something here. Okay. This is the sneaky mansion disruptor. I was living in my ex's house with her. Spooky already. Her parents brought, bought this mansion and they were using it for an Airbnb. The mansion is located in Nephi. It's called the Whitmore Mansion. It itself has quite a backstory and you can look it up on Wikipedia. We lived in the basement and we had guests come and go while we watched over and cleaned up. It was around midnight to 1 a.m. and we were just laying in bed watching game shows on Netflix because we like to just make fun of stupid answers people would have. Then all of a sudden, we hear a big crash from upstairs, so we come up to check. There's three floors, not including the basement, and we get to the first and walk through the kitchen to the main entrance where the stairs are. We started to smell something burning, so we looked around everywhere on the first floor and we found nothing. Now a little shook, we hesitantly went up the stairs to the second floor. This is where it got a little crazy. We found a big picture, and I will say this picture was pretty heavy due to the frame it was in. It was laying face down, on the opposite side of the room like it was thrown off the wall. Mm. We found shattered glass everywhere, except where the painting actually was, like someone moved the pieces around the room. It started to give both of us chills. Mm. We started to clean it all up and we smelled the burning again. We looked around to find nothing. The heater was not on. I cannot explain any of this. And right after we left the house to stay with our parents for a couple of nights because of how scared we got. Mm. Ay, ay, ay. A giant painting, glass shattered everywhere. But that's so. How did that thing get across the room? Mm-hmm. That's very strange. Yes, this Whit Whitmore Mansion also, the George Carter Whitmore Mansion is a historic house in Nephi, Utah, or Nephi, Utah, maybe. Nephi, Nephilim, mm-hmm. Nephilim. Nephi. <laughs> what? It was built in 1898 for George Carter Whitmore, who founded the first national bank of Nephi and served as a Democratic member of the Utah Senate. That was probably yeah. the last Democratic member of the Utah Senate uh, from 1900 <laughs> to 1908. The house was designed in the Queen Anne and East Lake styles. Uh, it, yeah, it looks like a, it looks like a big mansion that would be featured on a fun spooky supernatural series it's kind of yeah that sounds guaranteed haunted is what that sounds like to me Mm -hmm. um and this is from a listener named hunter who sent in uh attached a a second story this is story number two okay the very nice blue lady this story (laughs) takes place at the house i currently live in at the time of this i was about 14 or 15 i was fast asleep and it was weird because i had no recollection of dreaming at all this night I randomly woke up, I didn't know what time it was, 
I had my blinds shut and I could see some sort of deep blue hue coming from my blinds and leaking into the room. Then I rolled over and pulled the drawstring to lift them up. As I lifted them up, all I could see was this faint blue light entering my room and filling up the space. I felt comfortable. I don't know why. This was crazy. I didn't question it. I couldn't see this person's face, but I can remember her clothing and what she told me. I looked at her and she didn't have legs. She was floating. My window sits right on our front porch and there's a bench right beneath my window. She was right above this bench. She had a flower in her hands and she had bluish brownish hair. Her attire was an early 2000s wedding look. Strange. Yes, yeah, strange because when did ghosts become 2000s? I, was, I thought they were colonial. That's how old we are. Ghosts are thousands. Yeah, ghosts yeah, are really right, into Y two K now. Uh, also, <laughs> along with the Whitmore Mansion, I might have to Google two thousands wedding look because I'm not yeah, I'm sure that what now. that specific look is. Bryce, that's around the time you got married, wasn't it? Or yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that is. Yeah, <clears throat> I'll, only on my wedding, I I fucked up and wore all white. I, I wish I could take that back. Ugh. <laughs> You, uh, you were. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I was gonna trying to be cool, and uh, yeah, it just looks dumb. But uh, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> like I'm the what? bride, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. of course I had to wear Competing all white. Competing with like, your own, uh, with your wife. And uh, now, after you pass, this is the look you'll be stuck yeah, in forever. Yeah. You're stuck in. Yeah. <laughs> You're damned. You're damned. Oh, no. I bought. I had this dumb white hat too, like this derby hat. I was like, oh, this is oh. cool. Oh, no. And I was like, oh. I that is a that. club Bryce groom <laughs> <laughs> outfit if I've ever heard of it. <laughs> oh yeah. So I looked up 2000 uh wedding dresses. Yeah, these are this is pretty nice. This is like something what Don wear wore. It's kind of just nice and simple, elegant. I could see it being ghosty, yeah, for sure. All right. Cool. The cover went over her face, so I couldn't see anything. She then told me, Don't go, don't go, don't go. I still to this day do not know why she said this to me, but this was very weird. And this right here is the first time the story is coming out. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys Whoa. for taking the time to read all this. I hope you're successful in finding the man, the myth, and definitely the legend, Mr. Bigfoot himself. That's it. Stay, Stay strange and please go get regressed. Hunter. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. This mm-hmm. is, um. so what do we think here now? Santina, you have experience in this department, a, uh, a, a, a frame that's been thrown across the room, and then a full-formed apparition. Have you ever experienced something like, like this before? The full-formed apparition, yes, I have, many times. Glowing, um, like lit up blue? Like, is does it look... Because the way this is described... Excuse me, um, I've got a little frog in my throat, but the way this... Is described sounds like something out of Ghostbusters almost. You know what I mean? Like a, a blue glowing lady. Is that? I have seen things like that, but the problem is it's quick. It's not like something I'm looking at for, you mm. know, 10 seconds straight or something that I could make it out. But I actually, you know, when he says this thing about it's floating by the window, it that when I read this, the, it reminded me of something that happened to me when I was younger. And there was someone at my window and it was so creepy as, it was so creepy because I was facing the other way. And then my neck just like turned by itself. Mm. And I looked at the other way at the window, which was the other wall um, from, from the one I was facing originally, it turned and I was like, like, ow, like it turned my, something turned my neck and there was someone Whoa. at the window. And that was oh. freaking weird. Yeah. And you felt like a look force like? turn your neck? Yes. Damn. Yes. And That's then there weird. was someone at the window, but he's describing a very like, ni- and most of the the apparitions that I see feel like co- nice to me. Like I said, and my grandparents and whatever, like that, those kind. But that one, that day, I remember being like, not safe, feeling like not safe about it. Hmm, I don't like that. Yeah, what that is- was a, a spooky one. Yeah, Bryce, yeah. Well, uh, I echo Bryce's question. What did it look like? It looked like, um... It looked like a murderer. It looked like a seventies. <laughs> oh, we're gonna no. go and use the. It's not two thousands. It was. It wasn't even the two thousands yet when this happened. So it was looked more like a seventies murderer man. 
Now I'm going to Google 70s murder. Yeah, see what comes up. (laughs) Almost like. It's a white suit with a white bowler's cap. (laughs) Looks like me. Right. It it looked like something out of Twin Peaks, almost. He looks like. Yeah, it was was really terrifying. Um, And I kind of forgot about that. But when I was reading the story, it reminded me of that moment in my life, which I didn't totally forget about. I, I don't like that story i try to forget about it, it was a bad one i don't have a lot of bad yeah. ones like that yeah I don't, and the picture don't flying like across either. the room that's just evil that's just black i don't know what that was but that's yeah, not like the, a nice little message there's that no. smell that burning smell too there's always some like sulfur smell associated with with that type of yeah mm. it's weird that reminds me of Spider One and Chrissy Fox's story about the their big heavy movie poster that went flying. Off yeah, the reminded wall. me of that too. Yeah. Do you think the that ghosts crazy. in that mansion were irritated that it was becoming an Airbnb, and so they <laughs> probably? <laughs> yeah, because I, be. I bet it was that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my neighbor tried to turn the apartment next to mine into an Airbnb, and let me tell you, I was pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Absolutely. Well, thanks, what Hunter. Do you think thanks. About, yeah. Well, I have a question. What do you think about the ghost saying, don't go, don't go, don't go? Good that question. Seems sad. That does sound sad and lonely. And that it, yeah. she was in a wedding dress. It's all very, that's a, that's a, oh, that's a sad no. one. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I, I have a, I, I'm still trying to figure out what these, see, when you hear something like that, like the don't go, don't go, it's, it sounds like some sort of traumatic event caught mm-hmm. in a loop. You know what I mean? Um, like it doesn't seem like some sentient apparition that's you know uh, conscious and able to yeah visiting it just seems like some sort of uh some some memory some attached to an apparition you know i don't know i mean it makes you think like did was she left at the altar and then died sad or you know Mm -hmm. or did the two of them die on their wedding night or something it's really You know, in in ritual magic and stuff, it it, it takes extreme high intensity emotion and feeling to sort of to create uh, sort of a magical event or or, or a magical result. And sometimes I'm wondering if like, like even Michael, to your point, like, you know, if this is such like something so traumatic in somebody's life that maybe it can reverberate through time and and leave impressions, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In in, in places and time. I don't know. I mean, not a bad guess. You know, it's all speculative. We don't know what's going on. All right. Thanks, Hunter. Riley, what do you got for us? All right. I have a strange case of astral ejection. Oh, (laughs) sorry. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Here we go. In 2020, I was in college when the virus hit. And with it, so did a rolling depression that took everyone over. This obviously comes with a mass quarantine, of course. Not everyone wants to be forced to stay in their dorms for a whole semester. God, that would if suck. If I wasn't doing... Yeah, yeah, that really... Oh, man. In a I college. Feel like all, all I did in freshman year is make out with every stranger. How could you go through college <laughs> without making out? <laughs> yeah. It's true. That's... I was, you, Santina, I was like, hey, if there was like a couple, you know, good looking oh. people around. I was like, I'm hey, going to go ahead and guess that they were all hooking up in this yeah. storm. I will <laughs> you got to... Yeah, you got to hope. <laughs> All right. Uh, If I wasn't doing schoolwork, which I barely did to begin with, I was sleeping or gaming. I had no roommate at the time, so there wasn't anyone to talk to or hang out with, even if it was involuntary. I'd laid down after a long day of doing jack shit and promptly fell into a (laughs) toss-turn kind of sleep. When I finally settled, I remember suddenly waking up, standing in the humid warmth of a South Texas summer night, and I could feel the scratch of grass against my bare feet as I stared directly at the complex that housed my dormitory. There was no stepping out of my body or anything, just immediate exile from my own body into the world outside. Oh, wow. I remember, st- I remember standing for a long time, feeling sickly and uncomfortable before I heard someone yell at me. The voice was a woman's, and I could see flashes of her appearing in my vision as if she was barely clinging to reality herself. Her hair was white and messy, and her eyes were stark gray like cold concrete. She screamed at me that I didn't belong, saying, You need to go back! You can't be here! And she continued howling at me to return to myself. I began running, but not a solid sprint. It was the slow-motion, sliding kind of run that didn't get far very fast. I ran for hours, dragging myself towards my dorm's door. 
I could see the light of the sun coming up behind me by the time I reached the door, and when I grabbed the doorknob, everything went silent except the sound of the door opening, which finally woke me up. I sat up and looked directly at the face of someone peeking into the dorm from the open door, directly staring at me in my bed, before he slammed the door shut, leaving me stunned and afraid. I don't know what happened, and quite frankly, questioning it makes me panic a little. What do you Mm. think happened? Your accidental astral traveling friend, Kel. Whoa. (laughs) Yeah, that's trippy. (laughs) Also very uh, poetically told there. Uh, Great, great letter, Kel. Yeah, Um, fantastic letter. I had a little light bulb go off hearing this. Now, in this is a story where someone sees a sort of ghostly form who says, you need to go. You need to get back, right? The blue Mm -hmm. lady in the previous letter was like, don't go, don't go. So what if, what if when we're seeing these ghosts or these spirits, part of us is crossing over as well? You know what I mean? And we're stepping through a threshold and maybe that ghost, the blue lady was like, don't go, meaning don't go back to terra firma because then I I won't be able to communicate. You won't be able to see me. You know what I mean? And I Mm -hmm. desperately want someone to see me. Mm-hmm. Whereas this so instead one, instead of them coming through, we're going through. Yeah, we're both right. getting on the yeah. line. We're both we're, we're both sort of entering a, a crossover zone. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Where we can see them and they can see us, and so that's the thing is maybe maybe that blue lady understood. Oh, they're th- we're overlapping, and I don't want them to step out of this overlapping zone. Right, yeah. the Twilight Zone. Maybe that would be a good name yeah. for it. And Absolutely, then, man. And then in this one with somebody, uh, yeah, I mean, I think Kel's guess is as good as anybody else's. This is like some astral traveling, it sounds like. I don't but know. But that part at the end where someone was actually at the door that Kel had dreamed themselves going up to and opening, it's like, it's so deeply surreal. Like, is that yourself opening the door, coming back to yourself? Like, what? Maybe. Or is that just the brain heard someone coming down the hall and it reassociated that as that's the moment I'm waking up and somehow it all just clicked together? Or, you know, it's, I don't know, whatever it is, it's just like, it's like deeply surreal and very yeah. I, cool, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I got to get to the bottom of this astral traveling thing. I've got to read that book and see if I can't uh, get get out of my bed a few nights and try that. That's talk to your lambs, seems... see if they have any suggestions. <laughs> it's right, yeah, yeah, not, not a bad idea because it does seem very different from from lucid dreaming. You know, um, yeah. In, as as Kel was describing, he it seemed he seemed very sort of aware that he was outside of his room and on the grass and. Uh, it, do, it does have some of the hallmarks of this astral traveling. Um, very strange. I don't know what to make of it. Santina, do you feel like you've ever left your body and projected yeah. around? Yeah. I'm, um, I told the story on the last one, but when I had my car accident originally, mm-hmm. when I was a little girl, I was, after the impact, I was looking in the car from through the, through the front window, like, Mm. through the windshield into the car rather than where I was in the back seat looking forward. I was outside of the car looking in and I saw wow. my body like hunched over how it, you know, went over. And that was, wow. that was yeah. my main one. And then I've had a few of these dr- ones that are happening sort of in my sleep, but I have no idea how to control them. I have no idea how to like hone this thing. So I don't, I'm like, I'm just like this guy. I'm like, what, what the hell, you know, yeah <laughs> you know i guess the one thing that ties and i guess uh, did did you ever feel sort of connected to your physical like uh, so with this astral projection thing there one thing in common seems to be this sort of cord uh that connects your body to uh to this spirit body there's always like this connecting cord um mm-hmm. so it's like a string you're attached to like a kite on a string whereas with lucid dreaming you could you know travel as fast as thought wherever you'd like to go um so I don't know. Did you when, when you're next time? I guess you experience that. Just is, you know, maybe see if you see that connective cord. It's usually attached to like uh, your body. I don't know. Well, you just unlocked memory for me, which is when I was younger. After this said accident, I had several surgeries because mm. you know there was a lot of internal bleeding and a lot. So I was having several surgeries, and there was one time that I can 
remember, I don't know now. So I felt like I was out, I was watching the surgery. I was watching it from the outside yeah. and I could, and that cord you're talking about, I did experience that. But then I started to wake up and then I remember I could hear someone saying she's waking up and then they put the uh, mask over my face hmm. to put me back to sleep. So oh. I kind of woke up mid, Whoa. like I was waking up mid surgery, <gasps> but before I woke up, before I woke up, I was watching the surgery from outside with this cord attached to my body. Like you just yeah. described. Wow. I remember that. That was crazy. Yeah. I remember that. That was weird. That's why sometimes, sometimes this is like, maybe, I don't know. Is this bizarre? Sometimes I'm like, was that surgery or was I abducted by aliens? That's what yeah, I think sometimes. I, Especially when they go shoot. You're in the right home. place to ask that question. I know. Yeah. I thought so. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I was What's probably the- surgery just based on the odds of how many surgeries I've had. But I, then I watched that movie Communion. You know, um, I read the yes. book and then I watched it. And right. I was like, I was, I felt like PTSD or something while I was watching it. It was like more Whoa. than scared. But, no, for sure. Uh, this surgical aspect is a part of the abduction phenomena. As a, mm. as a matter of fact, I just ordered it. You know, uh, we had great guests on last week, uh, the, the the filmmakers from the Aerial School Phenomenon documentary. And, uh, you know, in that documentary, they speak with Harvard psychiatrist, Dr. John Mack, who was really the, the, the leading uh, researcher uh, into the abduction phenomenon. And, uh, you know, there there is this there is this strange thing where, uh, yeah, people are always end up on some type of surgical table and there's, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what to make sense of it. I, I ordered that book, his book, Passport to the Cosmos. Uh, but Michael, even then in that great book, Graham Hancock, Supernatural, he talks about how this phenomena kind of goes back even centuries before where even in shamanic traditions, you know, people will be sort of operated on by these spirit entities. Yeah, and the pierced sort of, man phenomenon. The pierced man phenomenon. And there's always like mm. a wand or like, mm. I, I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah, it's so, so weird. Mm. Crazy. All right. Well, thanks, Kel. Bryce, uh, we've got an L file here that I thought you would like to read, especially since you uh, recently have been touting yoke to alchemy. Okay, great. Yeah, nice. All right, here we go. Hi, boys. My name is Rachel, and I'm a fairly new listener. I have an extremely weird experience from roughly a year and a half ago that I absolutely have not been able to shake. A little while ago, between lockdowns in NZ, I'm assuming that's New Zealand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, I was in my gym (laughs) at around 1 a.m., and there was only me and one other guy in the gym. I was having a great lifting session and aiming to hit a military press of 80 pounds, nice, until something incredibly bizarre happened mid-set. All of a sudden, I felt myself feeling less and less present or grounded. This is the best way I can describe it. I kept going through my set until out of the corner of my eyes, I could see shadow people moving all around me and I felt very much like I was being closely watched. A couple of bizarre points about this whole experience was that these shadow people were only visible in my peripheral vision. When I turned to intentionally look straight at these things, I couldn't see them, but out of the corners of my eye, they were everywhere, and they moved intelligently and with purpose. The longer this went on, I felt kind of terrified. I have never, ever felt before in my life, and everything in my body was telling me I had to get out of the gym. Don't do it. Finish the set. Sorry, I I added that. (laughs) What's more... I didn't feel like I was in the same dimension as when I had before uh, my previous set of military presses. The room looked the same, but it wasn't. I felt like really tiny aspects of the room were off. Objects had slightly shifted. The normally cool white tone light in the building had changed to a weird warmer tone of light, and the Mm. power had gone out in one area of the gym. Whoa. And I really can't reiterate. Just how much I felt out of place, like wherever I had shifted to, I really shouldn't be there. Well, there you go. I, there you go. We're on to I something tonight. As, yes. Yeah, oh, theme. my God. I left mm-hmm. as fast as I could. I didn't even bother taking off my wraps, sped home, and I couldn't shake the weird feeling for days. That night, 
I felt like I was being preyed on by something I couldn't even properly see in the place that wasn't here. So much of it doesn't make sense. My gym is a 24-hour gym. The lights are always on and you can only get in with a swipe key. The security guards at night don't enter the gym as they don't have access. I'm a night owl. I wasn't half asleep. I was pumped and ready to smash the rest of my workout, so there was no way I was hallucinating out of exhaustion or tiredness. I don't have any health issues at all uh, that would cause me to see things that aren't there. This only occurred after only the other guy in the gym left. Hmm. Fucking strange. I don't drink. I don't partake in any substances. I don't even take pre-workouts that have uh, stims in them, stimulants. I basically use as little supplements as I can get away with. Protein bars, protein powder, uh, low stim pre-workout is all I have used in the same brands for years. The ingredient lists have never changed in my time using them. I've never had a negative health reaction to them. I don't have an overactive imagination, much less when I'm working out. My main focus is my lifting, and I'm not a stranger to heavy lifts, and I've never experienced any blacking out or seeing spots after a big lift or anything like that before. The gym building is pretty new, not old, so no creepy history behind it, and the ground it's on doesn't have any weird history that I know of. Okay, check, check, check. Uh, (laughs) I couldn't make myself return to the gym for about a week after. But I still witnessed shadow people there for a while after that. Oh, wow. Weird. Although I never had such an intense experience after that either. I didn't feel like I was being so heavily watched. They were just whatever. What was that? Oh, oh. Uh, they were just there moving around and observing me every now and then. The same level of fear has only occurred on the odd occasion since then. Though more concerningly, that fear has now really occurred in my home. I've tried to find an answer ever since, but had no luck. And remembering the experience still brings a fight flight feeling. Oh Hmm. shit. I've been there. I don't disbelieve in the paranormal. Although I have never had my own experience. It sounds like you did now and consider myself a skeptical believer. It's a great place to be. Sorry. I'll, I'll stop. Uh, (coughs) Expositioning, but this did not feel paranormal and is haunting to think of. I've always been someone to look for logical reasons behind weird things occurring, but I've never found an answer for this. I've always said that being in the gym and working out, especially pushing heavy weight, has been a meditative experience for me. But I highly doubt that I projected my whole self to another plane of reality. That's going to be my best guess coming up. And that some of the reality stuck to me upon returning since. I still see shadow people, and I still occasionally catch them seemingly observing me. Sorry, sorry for the essay. Just hope that having a bit more info might help you guys work out what the hell could have happened to me because it still freaks me out. Hope you all had an awesome Christmas and have a great new year. <laughs> I love That's the hard for- corners. Of Thanks, Rachel. Uh, yeah. Wow, Rachel. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Uh, guys, I'll pass it over to you, but I think Rachel's instincts in, in that last paragraph are pretty fucking spot on, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, what did she say? I'll read that again. Uh, I've tried to have uh, fight flight uh, own experience. No, uh, projected her whole self to another plane of reality. And some of that reality stuck upon returning. Mm. Santina, what do you think? I'm scared to go to bed tonight. Oh, you'll be all right. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I mean, yeah, it sounds like, I'm not saying that, you know, working out like um, that she pushed herself too hard, but sometimes working out can be sort of meditative. And when you're meditative, that's how mm. you can maybe slip through these worlds a little bit. Yep. 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 Perhaps. Yep. That's yep. that was where I was going. Rachel, first of all, I wish I had a tenth of your discipline. Yeah. And yeah. it does sound as if you are, Rachel, you are like, you you've built a practice, right? And mm-hmm, and and, mm-hmm. and Rachel even says in the letter that sometimes they get into a meditative state. So yep. I, I'm wondering if she is just like maybe had a knack for this stuff and didn't know, mm-hmm. but maybe this is sort of like how how she's ended up tuning her instrument. Like and, through disciplined ritual, yeah, like, just in the, yeah, in the, in the, in the yes. way that like other people like get there through again 
like meditation or doing some sort of ritual practices that maybe there truly is some yoked alchemy happening here. And you know Fuck what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't yes. know. And, and, and I wonder, and I don't mean <clears throat> to freak, freak Rachel out, but like projecting your whole self into another reality. I mean, maybe it's not that dramatic. Maybe it's just that you're getting your body into such a peak state and that maybe mm. at certain times when you're in that disciplined mindset that is at some point you are going to be like, I really do think you do cross over just mentally into a higher mm -hmm. realm that maybe yeah. it's just tuning your frequency into seeing again, what, what the first two letters sort of touched on that maybe there's, you know, an overlapping dimension that you're like tuning into. And maybe yeah. if we want to go horror movie and I don't want to, cause I don't want to scare you. Maybe somebody <laughs> there was like, Oh, Hey, uh, Rachel can see us now and did follow you, has followed you around, mm. you know, maybe mm. followed you back home or, or maybe just at home, you're just in touch with that same overlapping dimension mm -hmm. that, that you got yourself into. Now, clearly, look, I'm just coming up with a story here that explains this like everybody else, but yeah, I can I add to this too, Michael. Yes. I think you're, I think you're close, man. Uh, and I'll tell you why, because, okay, so. I've been practicing some yoked alchemy lately and <laughs> after my, and you, you said it, it is, it is a ritualistic practice that, uh, that can actually become quite meditative. And, 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 and when I sometimes like, so when I finish a workout, sometimes I'll do a cardio, which gives me this great opportunity to tap into this liminal space. And I use that time for, for vi felt visualization. It's transcendence, and it sounds like, right? I mean, yes, they, they say the same stuff with like, they basically say like any, like that's why like the, you know, the, the whirling dervishes like spin mm -hmm. or that's there's right. people that's who exactly like dance right. themselves into a transcendent experience. Sex magic is one of those things. I don't yep. see why yep. working out this, and building a disciplined mm -hmm. practice might not put you in a different headspace where you're like, well, and you could have accidentally gates. sort of activated some Kundalini energy that might've just, you know, it, exploded at that time and, and and sent you into another dimension now the shadow people that's a little disturbing i mean we don't know how many dimensions really exist so i'm not sure where you ended up and what you might have brought back or hopefully nothing but i would say you know if i had any advice to proffer i would be like you might want to find something that like is personal to you like a talisman whether it's a piece of jewelry uh it could be anything anything uh that you bring to your gym routine and uh you know i i, I would i would probably go ahead and and, and uh maybe pour some do salt some around your bench a, press <laughs> no but like uh, maybe what, what's the word am i looking for michael to 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 uh like a word to mark this no to 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 use this talisman to like ritual to uh do a, a ritual for this talisman as a protection ritual that's yeah, what award. i was looking for yeah a word yes yes and and then that should be able to help I that I would is, also say, I like, we've we've had Adela Levine, who's a medium, obviously on the show a bunch, and she's always been of the mindset that, like, shadow people, you're just seeing, it's not like they're, like, cre necessarily creatures made of right. shadows, that they are just, they're just not fully formed in this dimension, so it mm -hmm. literally could be, like, it could be something as sci-fi as, like, you're looking at one multiverse over, and it's people working totally. out in the gym in yeah. another, like, in a slightly mm. shifted dimension, and you're only seeing their shadows. You said you described them as, like, moving around deliberately, right? So mm. it could just be, like, one one degree away where it's Wednesday over there in a slightly different dimension that basically otherwise looks exactly like our own. You know, right. Yeah. That, that's like what I wanted to add to is that like, you know, the experience of seeing shadow people is probably one of the most common paranormal experiences. Yep. So you're, yep. you're not alone with that. And then also it's not generally like associated with actually bad things happening. It's a scary image, like the shadow person, the, the dark figure, you know, of course that's like a frightening image, but it's not necessarily associated with s negative things happening. And I mean, I would, my like two cents would be like, maybe if you, if you see one or you feel one watching you, like maybe just don't look away, just like look back and like really get a look at that shadow person. <laughs> you seem like the kind of person that would, that would stare down a shadow person. So I say, uh, I say peer back.
She did use that word fight or flight though too, which tells me that this is like a height, like the body is, Mm -hmm. is the, the whole, the whole body is, is, is experiencing, you know, like that fight or flight, which is a, which is a very visceral response. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I like this idea. Push of, through uh, it. Push through uh, it. And stoically uh, look back. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then so let us wild. know what happens. Santina, you were going to add something. <laughs> oh, just that I've learned that you know if you do feel like a presence is not welcome, you can. There's certain little things you can say to it that are supposed to be helpful. So if she is feeling fearful, or if she's feeling, you know, maybe she could write some of those down and then just sort of say them, say them out loud. Sometimes mm. Mm. that's all you have to do is ask it to go or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't know. Don't follow me that. home. You're not welcome here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. yeah. You're in the driver's seat. Yeah. Man. I, I don't know. You know, I think just try. I mean, if she hasn't tried that yet, try it. Yeah. And Hey, like it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to, to create a protective talisman either. So <laughs> Why not? Why not? Yeah. Exactly. Good luck. Let us know. Give us send us some updates, Rachel. Yeah, Thank follow you. up with that, Rachel. Thank you. All right. I think we have time for one more. This is a really fun one. I'm not sure if this listener wanted to remain anonymous or not, so we're just going to call them B. Hey there, BCC. I've binged many episodes in the last week and a half, been listening nonstop at work since I heard your plug at the end of Distractable in early January, and I wrote this during your interview with Linda Godfrey since it was too hard to just sit with while listening to all the information she had about the scariest experience of my life. All considered, I should be a missing person or a headline that reads, Local woman found mauled by vicious animal. (laughs) I work at Walmart, and at the time of the experience, I was given occasional night shifts. Now, sidebar, I wrote B back and said, can you tell us where this took place? And without getting too specific, she said, uh, central rural Florida. So we're talking Florida. Okay. 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 Now, I can't drive, and Uber wasn't cooperating with me at the time, so at roughly 1 to 2 a.m., I took off from the end of my shift to go home. For the most part, it was a normal walk home at night because, uh, beside the highway, occasional street lamp, a car passing me every now and then, the usual business. All the way from departure to the moment I turned onto the road that led to my neighborhood, I'd had my earbuds in listening to music to help make the walking more bearable. Music, you should be listening. The big vocal actor's gone. <laughs> you can also listen to music. That's fine. All right, all right. Says the musician. But alternate. Okay, alternate. musician. <laughs> Don't make us put you in the fuck you bucket. Yeah, yeah. You, you want to end up with the scientists? Yeah, you want to go there? <laughs> well, Never mind. There. Only listen to our podcast ever. <laughs> they go on. At this point, there was approximately 30 to 40 minutes left of walking. Only one street lamp at a winding turn that lets directly into my neighborhood with both dense woods on one side and very healthy, thick-developed orange groves on the other. Me being paranoid inherently, I had a knife with me. So just in case I got ambushed by a dog or coyote or even a junkie looking for cash to get a fix, and it was both drawn and ready for action. Also, sidebar, (laughs) these letters are getting good. Uh, You guys are writing... (laughs) You guys are writing some good stories. Totally. Now, I'd like to bring my attention back to my earbuds. I couldn't hear, and I, I was just off the shoulder of the road, so I didn't have to worry about being hit by a car that didn't notice me. That's when I noticed it. I didn't hear it, but I felt it. There was a rumbling in my chest, similar to if you stood in front of a large speaker or subwoofer, but I couldn't hear anything over my music. This was odd, since if it was intense enough to go through my body, it should be loud enough to drown out my music. My skin stood on end then, and my gut demanded I run. And the vibe I got was that if I didn't listen, I would meet my end. And yet, knowing what I do about predators, I knew that running would set off every chase instinct it had, which would leave me just as dead. Instead, I turned to face the dense woods, Nothing, just brush, trees, and an excessive amount of Spanish moss. That's when I heard it directly behind me, a snapping branch and a very loud hoof. I turned, 
much slower this time, automatically looking down since I assumed an animal, and instead, I was met with thick, beefy legs of corded muscle ending Mm -hmm. in hind paws. I have several dogs and have several more prior and have had several more prior in my life. So I know what canine feet look like. And that's what capped off those muscular legs was a pair of massive canine hind paws. I started to tilt my head upward and my ears were met. My, my ears were met with the origin of the rumbling from earlier, a deep, throaty, furious growl, and it sounded as if the mere idea of me wanting to look at it was an insulting concept that understood that it understood with clarity. Wolf behavior. I knew it well enough based on an, on every ounce of wildlife education material which I consumed with the, the same eagerness as a child eats candy. He or she was warning me. Slowly and ever so carefully, I put my knife down, I got on my knees, and only then did it allow me to look at it. Ugh. Due to the light level, listen, if you guys are throwing some creepy pasta our way, I'll be upset, but this is good. <laughs> Due True. to the light level, it was hard to tell whether it was a dark gray, black, or dark brown fur color, but it was covered in almost but it, it was covered in it almost everywhere, with the exception of the bottom half of its chest, to just above the pelvis. Dark, powerfully muscular skin glistened with either sweat or moisture from the air, and as it breathed, the torso moved heavily in time. The head was absolutely massive and decidedly lupine. Brilliant blue eyes shined above a snout that was tipped with a dark wet nose with lips and jowls withdrawn to display its teeth and fangs. Yet another warning and threat. I avoided eye contact from that point to the end. I was shivering at this point, not because it was cold, but because I was terrified. It took a single step forward, a plume of dusty sand kicked up in the process, was all I saw as I dropped my head ready for the end. Instead, the creature, I refuse to call it a monster, displayed its intelligence. It tilted my head up with an extremely long finger attached to a hand with a palm bigger than a dinner plate and tipped with a three inch long claw. It tilted my head around, claw tip pressed against my neck the whole time, growling if it saw uh, if it saw my eyes try to look at its face again. Finally, in a move I assumed was to snuff out my life, it drew nearer to me, sniffing me now as if it were looking for a particular scent. After what felt like forever, but was probably no more than a minute of being examined, it huffed, snarled, barked, and then howled before turning to the grove, (laughs) dropping to all fours, and all but disappearing. I don't know who or what it was looking for, or if it ever found what it sought, but I haven't seen it since, with nothing but thanks from me. As a secondary note, for a while afterwards, I wasn't certain whether it was male or female, but I went for regression after listening to several dozens of episodes of your podcast. <laughs> oh, no. The one Amazing. person that's taking our advice. <laughs> took our advice. Great. Great. It worked. And what was pulled out was far scarier than what I already remembered. It was a female, but more importantly, it was very much not alone. Several pairs mm. of eye shines hovered behind her. I don't dare think about to, about it to try to recount them, but I'd stumbled on the pack, and the queen, for lack of a better word, was performing oh a threat assessment. I'm very lucky to be here, I think. <sighs> B. Wow. Wow. Word. Now, Love they did letter. say, I don't want this to be specific, they just said central to rural Florida. I mean, now this is a wild story, B. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but that's some very, very vivid detail. And uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is my mind is blown by mm-hmm. this Florida beast man. Yeah. Well, look, these, these or beast dog woman, men, I should say. Beast woman, yeah, yeah, beast woman. These these dog man, the Florida dog woman beast sightings have been occurring more and more uh, in the last, I would say, I don't know, uh, 30 to 50 years, as Linda S. Godfrey can attest. And, you know, I'm, I'm starting to wonder, as much as like this alien UFO phenomenon seems to be 
absol- uh, t- 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 seems to be uh, evolving and 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 transmogrifying. I wonder if this this Bigfoot thing is is doing the same thing and it's evolving along with it. it it's changing uh, its shape and and its appearance and it's and and it's uh, God. And not only how it interacts with us, but what if something like that is taking place? Like, I don't know, because something's got to account for all these these dog men sighting that people are seeing and reporting. And uh, it's not like they just popped up on the scene out of nowhere. So perhaps maybe this this Bigfoot phenomenon is evolving uh, along the way as well. And that's why we're getting some of these reports Either way, this is a sickening encounter, and holy <laughs> shit, man. I love it. I love that. That's crazy. So, this letter also kind of reads like the first chapter of a paranormal romance novel. Yeah, yeah. Just like it's the true. description of it oh, reaching out a single a finger. summer night <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. your throat to the wolf with the red yes, roses. Does anybody uh, really, get that reference? Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's a meatloaf song. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> yes. How could I not? Oh, my God. Like nice. a bird in a hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's good. a sexy. It's like one of those. That actually, Bad at Hell is the first CD I ever bought, to be, if you want to know the truth. And I awesome. remember hearing that song and being like, I feel a little interesting right now. <laughs> oh Sexy, sexy wolf, yeah. Sexy wolf, lady. I don't know, Santina, what do you think? Dog man, dog woman, are they out there? I mean, I don't, that's a new one for me, but I don't not believe it. But also, yeah, this person should also be a writer. Very poetic. Like truly, I want want more chapters. Take this and run with it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. She, I like that the 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 wolf beast of Florida, as you as you coined it, Michael, was like, "What you want? You want to look into my eyes? Are you sure? You want one more chance to do that? Like, oh, just horrifying. Yeah, yeah. the clawed finger yes. reaching out is really an image that will haunt me. Yeah, yes, Wild. it was very alpha energy, so it does make sense that it was like the leader of its pack, sort of. The queen. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love, love it. That. I want maybe this whole a, universe. I want to know everything. I know. This, maybe this needs to be an HBO uh, series. Maybe this is all <laughs> cross. You know, maybe all of these things are just crossing over from other dimensions. Maybe that's the unifying theme of the night. Mm-hmm. You know who could or go maybe, against the? Uh, oh, go ahead, Santina. I was yeah. going to say maybe female werewolves are like, "Hello, where's our friggin' movies?" Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Return of the Goddess. Am I right? That's right. That's right. The werewolf Bechdel test. Come on. Yeah, instead of exactly. like in Twilight, instead of <laughs> exactly. Twilight, where it's like vampires versus werewolves, it could be like uh, she beasts versus yoked alchemists. Yeah, Whoa. great. I like this all all outside of Walmart. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perfect setting. Perfect setting. Great stuff. Uh, right. A mini mall with a Walmart, a gym, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. just down the road from a college campus in an old uh, Victorian mansion, and we got ourselves. Uh, oh, we got a hit book. is what we've got. Yeah, we got a yeah. hit. <laughs> Santina Muha, thank you so much for joining us. Santina, where can people find you? Do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, Instagram, whatever. Come on. What, what, what do you got? Yeah, I guess if you want to follow me on Instagram, you could follow along with whatever. Right now, you'll see a lot of uh, what I've been eating and the progress <laughs> of my leg uh, fracture. But uh, when things come up, yes, that is where I will uh, promote them as I will awesome. do my, uh, with this episode of this podcast. Fantastic. Well, I know. We're all wishing you a speedy recovery. Yes, Indeed. exactly. Thank you. My sentiments, exactly. Thank you. And uh, I know we'll have you back here uh, on the show sooner rather than later. We won't go as long as we did because we you've always got great stories and I think really wonderful insight. And I know uh, you're just the perfect brain that we need while pouring mm-hmm. through these. <laughs> yes. So and get another light you. bulb for that. Uh, that yeah, Virgin Mary night happens. lamp. Start talking to that thing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm let, gonna, us, I mean, let us know. For sure. Yeah, let us you, know for sure. You and Bryce can start the lamp letters where your lamps can <laughs> become pen pals, talk to each other. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Santina. All right, Club Scouts, this is the part of the show where we ask you to show your love for BCC. Please follow, rate, and review us on your favorite podcast app. If you write us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, we might read it on the show, like this one. Chill Tony. 21 writes bcc really leaves you thinking 
a lot of what ifs, could be's, and why nots. I definitely will be listening to every episode. Five stars. Thanks, it's Tony. Just that <laughs> nice. That's just Tony, all that's I gotta chill. Do. That's a chill Perfect. review. Tony. That's yeah. a chill review. It really is. <laughs> yeah, lives yeah. up to the name. <laughs> that's what we do here. What if? Why not? And could be. It could be. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> if you love BCC and need more of it in your life, check out our Patreon, BCC The Other Side, for three bonus exclusive additional episodes every month. Uh, bonus and additional, same same word, uh, a little oh, redundant. Man. But by the time you hear this, there will be, get, get a load of this, guys. There's going to be 250 bonus drops over there, <laughs> oh God, including... That's awesome. Full length episodes and cosmic tracks from Super Producer Riley. Do yourself a favor and take a peek over at patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club. And I want our dear patrons to know that our recent movie club polls have closed. We were voting on whether or not we would complete the house film franchise. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and the results are in. Boys, are you ready for this? I have not. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. Now, I love, you know me, I love House 2. I was ready to go on to House <laughs> oh, we 3. Know. We know. Um, <laughs> and uh, I had it here. Hold on. Oh, man. I, oh, you're oh, really you know building what? the tension here. I accidentally deleted it. Crap. Well, I'll let you know. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait I have deleted over the here. post. <laughs> I did delete the post. I deleted the screen grab on on my thing. But I can tell you this. Uh, I can't tell you the exact percentage, but the vote came out, and no, we will not be continuing. Yes. <laughs> I think it was like it was oh my very god, close. it was thirty three. It was thirty three percent to thirty two percent. Thank there you. you go. Oh, whoever wow. very, so whoever was that tie breaking vote? <laughs> yeah, it was very close. <laughs> uh, I think uh, I think over one hundred twenty five people voted. Listeners voted over there. So not we could have had a lot more participation, guys. Yeah, um, much but, like uh, American democracy. There were, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seems that the larger body doesn't tend to vote. Although, but the uh, the, the third yeah. party candidate here uh, coming in at thirty percent of the vote, I don't care either way. But I love applesauce. So, oh, you know. thank you so much. <laughs> I figure when we add oh, apathy boy. to no, it turns out sixty two percent of our listeners don't really yeah, care if we continue. Like, yeah, yeah, just just keep just do so. Just talk about right. something. All right. Well, the club <laughs> scouts have spoken. We'll pick something Thank else uh, for our next movie club session, which will be coming up in a couple weeks. So come over to patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club. You'll find out what it is there. All right. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Bigfoot Collectors Club and on TikTok at BCC Pod. And don't forget to write in with your own paranormal stories to Bigfoot Collectors Club at gmail.com so we can include them in a future L Files episode like this one and, and put L Files in the subject line just in case I miss it. Please check out my other podcasts. Let your name, seasons one and two, are available right now on whatever pot, wherever, whatever podcast app you're listening to right now. Follow me on Instagram at McMills and hit me up on Cameo for a personalized video from me to you or a loved one. Yeah, that's right. You can find me on my socials as well. I'm on Instagram at Mr. Bryce Johnson and on Twitter at Bryce O. Johnson. Hit me up there. And I'm Peace Drone on Instagram and also on Cameo if you want me to sing you a song. Sing you a song. All right. Sing speaking song. of singing praises, we're going to do some <laughs> Patreon shout outs. These are loyal nice. club scouts who joined the other side. I want to say recently, but we have a backlog of these to do. So sorry it's taking so long. Here we go, boys. You know what you know what to do, starting with Bryce. Oh yeah. Merlin mm -hmm. Grubbs. Thanks, Merlin. Von Schroeder. Thank you. Kevin DeVis. Thank you, Kevin. Jake. Thanks, Jake. Katie N C. Thank you, Katie. Nikki Rotunda, Cosmeteer. Many thanks, Nikki. Welcome. R Rob Whitaker. What's up, Rob? Thank you. Allison Brilke. Thank you. G Baller 22, Cosmeteer. Oh, ooh, thank you. Riley, I feel like you should hit all those Cosmeteers. Look at all of sure. them. Should I just take the Cosmeteers? Sure. You yeah, take the, other take ones? the Cosmeteers. Let's change man. it up. Let's change it uh, up. Switch it up. We're flipping Craig it. Craig Temple. Craig Temple, Craig. Cosmeteer. Thank you. Thank you, Craig, and welcome. Thawne Oriate, Cosmeteer. Righteous name, Thawne. Thank you to the well, now that's you. A welcome to the Cosmeteer yeah. and thank yeah. you yeah. for sure. Yeah. Maybe our yeah. first alien you, listening. You belong to on the show. Cosmeteer for sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jeff Stewart. Thanks, Jeff. Stephen Whitmore. Thank you, Stephen or Stephen. We appreciate you, man. 
Thank you for covering me, Paul Roberts, Cosmeteer. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Welcome. Kirk Palmerton, Cosmeteer. Kirk Palmerton sounds like a like a real like sounds like he should be in like the like one of these seventies bands. Like a you know, like Kirk Palmerton and oh, yeah. Easy Rollers. You know what I mean? Right. Something like yeah. That. Yeah, he plays synth. Yeah, yeah. maybe guitar. Kirk, yeah, I love it. Welcome to the Cosmeteer. Thank you. Josh Cosmeteer. Josh, thank you. Thanks for joining the ranks. Caesar. Thank you, Caesar. Ondeg. Thanks, Ondeg. Mariah Stark. Thank you, Mariah. Carrie Bickner, Cosmeteer. Thank you, Carrie. Welcome. Mickey Hoffman. Thank you, Mickey. Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Brooke Page. Thanks, Brooke. Lucas. Thank you, Lucas. Don Oreb. Thanks, Don. Megan Panus. Thanks, Megan. Julie Curran. Thank you, Julie. Elizabeth Tess. A uh, thank you, Elizabeth. A- Ashley Bloom. Thanks, Ashley. Shannon Cole. Thank you, Shannon. And Nora Jane. Thank you, Nora. All right. Wow. We also want to thank Santina one last time. If we don't see you over on BCC the other side, uh, we'll see you back here next Wednesday for an all new episode of Bigfoot Collectors Club. Until then, good night and go get regressed. Bye bye. Bigfoot Collectors Club is produced by Riley Bray and Michael McMillan and scored and engineered by Riley Bray. Our theme song, Come Alone, is by Sun Eaters, courtesy of Lotus Pool Records. Do us a favor and support the show and unlock three bonus episodes every month by becoming a member of our Patreon, BCC The Other Side, which can be found at patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club.